What on earth have you got now, Barry, to fix it? Well, my wife was having a look on uh, Facebook and somebody was advertising a treadmill for free. But uh, it's got a fault on it. Um, apparently it runs for a while and then it just randomly stops uh, with an error message. Um, so I don't know what the problem with it is because I've never actually seen it working yet. So I think we'll have a quick look over it first and then uh, we'll plug it in and see what it does. So I'm using my uh, Milwaukee rocket light that I just repaired in a previous video there. And what have we got in here then? So it looks like we've got a permanent magnet motor here, um, which is obviously runs on DC. 240 volts at 11 amps. Now, a lot of people use these for uh, generators and things because uh, you know, a lot of people can convert them, you know, for uh, into wind turbines or such. Uh, so if we can't fix it, it could be a possible uh, candidate for that. Right, what else have we got down here then? Well, I can see two rather large capacitors down there. Uh, I can just see, looks like, uh, is that 680 microfarads? at 400 volts so I would think that is the uh, motor driver I'd say what happens is yeah, there's a bridge uh, there's a bridge rectifier just down there uh, I'll just point to it just uh, there so it looks like the mains comes in gets smoothed by these two capacitors and um, we've got a couple of uh, large MOSFETs just down in this area which uh, I guess are for speed control for the motor. There's a few LED lights in that there. There's a little bit of mains filtering on the input, which is just here. And this thing here is a, I'll just go on the other side, is a linear actuator. And what this is for, it either raises or lowers the, uh, the running deck here, so it's got a bit more of an incline. Uh, it looks like we've got an optical encoder on the back of the motor here. Uh, you can see that uh, just turning there. And that goes to a little opto sensor. You may just be able to see it there. And I guess that's to uh, give the machine feedback so it knows that it's uh, running at the correct speed. Right, what else have we got then? Let's have a look at the top end then. So it looks like we've got a rather large LCD display with some buttons. I'll say a couple of heart rate sensor sort of pad things there. Some kind of touch pad and uh, I believe that's for the, uh, the stop clip which uh, it looks like the magnet has came out of that. So that's uh, a little bit of a safety feature. But uh, right, let's switch it on and see what it does. Right, so I've switched it on and it says, please wait. Okay. Yeah, the display looks a bit uh, weird on the camera, but it doesn't actually look like that in real life. I think it's the uh, camera picking up. Uh, the extra segments and things. You can see them a little bit in real life, but not as bad as what's showing up on the camera there. And it's just continually saying, please wait. Oh. Stuck key error. That's a bit better. You can see the uh, display now. All right, call four. Call five, and it's showing a value there on the right hand side. So, so it's saying something about column five stuck key error. Let's uh, just try some of these buttons here. That one's clicking, that one's clicking. Well, all of those feel okay, and all of those feel okay. So why have we got an error? I wonder if it's um, 
I mean, the guy said it worked in like worked intermittently, so yeah, so it's randomly beeping now while it's saying please wait. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on here. Just, yeah, it's just beeping again there. It's still saying please wait. Like I said, the guy said it was uh, intermittent, the fault, so... I wonder if there's just a loose connection or something somewhere in it. Alright, so for some reason I think the machine thinks there's a key stuck. But uh, I don't know which key that would be. So I think what we might have to do is try and uh, get into this uh, top end. Because I think that's where the problem is going to lie. So whether it might be in this area or on the actual console itself. So uh, let's see how, uh, how we can get into that pit then. So we've got three Allen head bolts under here. I don't know if you'll be able to see them or not. There's one. There's another. And the other one's just there, so I shall remove those. So on the back of the screen it looks like we've got two connectors and an earth wire and a spade terminal. So we'll remove those and uh, hopefully that should uh, get the screen off. Right, so let's see what we've got in here then. So this looks like the uh, keypad on the front of the uh, screen here, which has got those controls on it. So I suppose we could unplug that and that would rule out this uh, keypad here. What else have we got on this board? Looks like we've got a microcontroller there, looks like an Atmel. Uh, I'm not sure what that is up there. Main HR. I'm not sure about that. Uh, looks like we've got a display driver chip there. Looks like uh, a linear power supply. We've got a couple of capacitors there and a couple of voltage regulators. Uh, there's a couple of logic chips there. That's about it, really. There's not really much else on here. Oh, but some uh, a serial port here with uh, TX and RX on there, and a reset line, an auxiliary I/O. Looks like we've got a. J tag interface at the top and he has a uh, in circuit programming that must be to uh, program the uh, microcontroller I guess right I think what we'll do we'll connect it back up and we'll disconnect this uh, keypad and we'll see what happens So I'm going to unplug this keypad. Right, so I'm going to switch it on there now. Now this just beeped. And it says please wait. It just beeped. It still seems to be randomly beeping. Oh, it's gone berserk there now. And I'm not touching anything. Let's just see if it comes up with the same column. So that should be this whole keypad disconnected now. So if it's still coming up with the error, it could be one of the inputs on the microcontroller broke. Or it could be something to do with this uh, keypad here. 
because it was column five. Yeah, it's still showing a value there, 40 on column five. Let's uh, have a look at the wires on the back again. So these connectors at the back here, this one's marked activity center, and this one underneath, I don't know if you can see there, is labeled main IO. So I guess the main IO is the one that goes down to this here, and activity center, I think, let you select the different activities such as uh, walk, jog, run, and setting the speed or low, mid, and high incline. So I wonder if uh, I unplug that, if it uh, will clear the error. I'll tell you what, I'll just switch it off again. And we'll unplug activity center. And we'll try switching it back on. So now there shouldn't be any keys plugged into it whatsoever. Replace switch. Well, that's different. Well, it's definitely a, a different error than uh, what we had before. Hmm. I think I might uh, see if I can work out how this panel comes off, so we can actually have a look in here. So I've undone all the uh, screws, and under here it looks like we've got another circuit board. Um, let's see if I can unplug this connector here. There we go. Right, I'll see if I can flip this over so we can get a better view of it. We have a membrane keyboard. It looks like it plugs into here. HR contacts. Uh, that could be heart rate. I guess those two go to these contacts here and here. Yeah, that must be for heart rate sensing. It looks like we've got a bit of a, a blob chip just in the... Uh, just in the middle there, and a few other components. Right, I think what we'll try is um, disconnecting. Oh, look, we've got something here marked safety switch as well, which I guess that goes to the. Uh, I guess is either a hall effect or a reed switch here where the magnet sits. So, I think we'll unplug this membrane and then we'll couple the, uh, the screen back up and see what it does then. That's if this unplugs, it may be soldered. No, I think it does unplug. Right, I'm going to remove these four screws and we'll get a better look. Right. So that's that uh, membrane unplugged. So we'll plug the cable back into there, plug it into the head unit, and we'll see what it does ne next then. Well, I've just loosely put it back together with this matrix disconnected, and we'll just switch it on and see what it does. Oh, select workout. Use arrows to select workout. Right, well those buttons seem to be doing something. And I guess it makes a beep when you press a key. So when it was randomly beeping, I guess it was uh, sensing key inputs. 
So it looks like there's a problem there on this uh, membrane keyboard here, possibly. No? Well, I didn't press anything then. And it beeped. Or is it just uh, going through a sequence, maybe? Yeah, because it's going on to uh, five and six now, so if I hit reset. Yeah, I think it was just going through a sequence there. All right, so looks like there's a problem with this membrane then. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about that then. Um, I'm going to fucking get this membrane off and maybe have a look at repairing it. I'm going to get a hairdryer and we'll try heating this membrane up to see if we can... It's just came up press end on there, so... I wonder if it is the membrane. Because it still seems to be making random beeping noises and that. I wonder if one of the microcontroller pins is just getting spurious readings, you know, if like there's a, uh, a pull up or pull down resistor. So if one of the input pins is not being pulled up or pulled down, it's kind of randomly floating. But it doesn't seem to be doing it when that keypad's connected. I wonder if I can measure the resistance of these pins on the keypad and see if there's any shorts. I think I'll try that. At least now we're... Oh. No, oh, it's just, uh, unless it's got some kind of auto power off. Let's just uh, switch itself off there. Oh, yes. Yeah, it must have, like, some kind of auto power off after a while. Nice. Okie doke. Let's uh, check the resistance on this uh, matrix. Right, so I've got the meter in resistance. And we're just going to go across on these pins here. The uh, very end ones aren't used because they don't go anywhere, so let's just start on the second pin in and just go across the rest of them, see if we get any readings. And I am getting a slight reading on uh, that pin there. Right, let's go on the next one along and then check it with the others. And I would expect them all to be uh, open circuit when there's nothing being pressed. It's a bit fiddly. And we've got a reading of about 25k between those two pins for some reason, which I wouldn't have thought right. Yeah, so we're definitely getting some kind of reading there between those two pins. I'll see if I can get a hairdryer and uh, we'll heat this uh, keypad up and see if we can uh, remove it, I think. I've just priced up a replacement uh, membrane and they're about £130, which I think is a little bit excessive, so... Uh, We'll see if we can uh, get this off and possibly repair it. Well, I wasn't quite expecting that. I thought... Uh, I thought the whole membrane would have came off. Not actual uh, the not actually the top part. I mean uh you could actually just uh put drill some holes in yeah, put switches and make your own membrane. But uh I can't see anything obvious with this so far. I don't see any signs of liquid damage or anything.
I mean, all of this looks fine. I've removed all of the uh, little button top things and I'm going to get some IPA and I'm just going to try cleaning up all of these uh, carbon contacts here. The only thing I have noticed is I'm not sure whether there has been some liquid damage or something because it does seem like something round about this area here. You can see some kind of marks. So we'll try cleaning it up and then I might connect it up but without these little bits of metal on and we'll see uh, if we still get the key stuck error. Right, it's the following day because it was getting a bit late last night to uh, continue with this. So I'm going to check the resistance on this uh, keypad after removing the... Uh, bits of metal on the front because before we were getting a 25k short between the pins either side of the centre pin here so I thought all of those are open circuit I think I'm going to trace this keypad out and see if we can figure out uh, where those two pins go to right it's a uh, raining quite heavily outside as you can probably hear so we've still got a reading on these uh, two centre or the two pins either side of the centre pin here and when I've traced them out this one comes down goes along and goes to the centre contact here and the other pin comes down goes across this link which goes over the top of the uh, that pin there goes down down and ends up to this switch here so if we measure the uh, resistance on this switch we seem to be getting a reading and the reading changes it's been down to as little as 25k and at the minute it's about it's about a mega ohm or 0.7 or like I said it keeps uh, varying So there we go, I just uh, had some, so many K there. There we go, 300K now. So the only place I can see where those two could possibly touch is under here somewhere. Like under there. So, um Unfortunately, I think this uh, membrane's either had a fluid or something leaked into it or it's just degraded the uh, insulation or something and this is kind of um, touching around about here. Right, I wasn't getting very far with the um, keypad, so I thought I'd order some buttons off Amazon because I've had a bit of a cunning plan. And I'm going to drill the control panel on the treadmill and replace the keyboard with some uh, momentary press buttons instead because I've ordered 14 of these buttons from Amazon for the price of £9 and it was going to be £110 plus that for a new membrane keyboard which would uh, probably eventually go the same way and at least if just one button breaks I can just replace one button rather than having to replace the whole keypad so after a bit of drilling and things if I can get this in shot this is what I've got and I'll just uh, flip it over. It's a bit big to fit on the uh, on the mat there, so that's it upside down because uh, it's just a bit easier to uh, get it on my bench that way. So that's what I've got so far. But now I need to uh, wire it all up. So, what do you think of me little uh, modification there? 
like say £10 instead of about £150. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Now the treadmill also came with this and I thought it was just like a, a foot strap or something of something else. But it's actually a wireless heart rate transmitter. Uh, you've got these two pads here which are actually electrical uh, contacts. Um, you put this uh, this belt on it and you, you strap it to your chest and it measures your heart rate through these pads and uh, transmits it uh, to the treadmill. And that might be that uh, small circuit board at the top of the display that uh, we noticed earlier that I wasn't too sure what that was for. So these aren't supposed to be user serviceable. Um, they've got a CR2032 battery inside of them uh, and then they're welded or plastic welded shut. And I think uh, the idea is you just buy a new one once the battery goes flat. It's supposed to last a couple of years but uh, yeah, I think the uh, battery's obviously run out in this one. So let's uh, see if we can get into it and uh, possibly replace it. So it looks like, um, I'll just zoom down a bit. So it looks like this is the area here. I don't know if we can get something in here, possibly pop that up or... Try a bigger screwdriver, I think. Yeah. No, I'm try heating it up a bit. Let's see if that's helped any. Getting there slowly. So it seems like the uh, rubber on the uh, strap is sort of melted into this uh, plastic cover. I'm trying to stab myself with the screwdriver. Everybody's cringing at the screen. <laughs> well, I can see a circuit board in there now. Yeah, don't try this at home, maybe. Alright, so. I wonder if I can leave that top bit on and just uh, prise it back like that. Right, so we've got a circuit board there. Looks like we've got two contacts either side and uh, three screws. Let's see if we can remove these screws. Got a bit of rubber holding it in there still. Hey, right, so there we go. And we've got a little bit popped out there as well. Now, if you want to change the battery in anyway, put a new uh, Duracell one in. We'll see if that makes any difference. Now, where do these contacts go then? I guess they went like that. It's not a very good idea. 
Because they're just going to drop out. Yeah, well, I thought they would be sold out or something. Just to uh, hold them in place. I mean, that has got it. Right, let's uh, see if we can get this back in. Right, I think uh, that'll do. We'll give it a try. So I found out how to get it into test mode and you can calibrate its hardware test. But it's also got a heart rate test. So if we go into there, we can see that the uh, wireless uh, heart rate transmitter bell thing is uh, actually working now. It's actually picking up a signal there. So uh, changing the battery might have done the job. Right, I think I've just got to uh, put it all back together now and uh, test that the new control panel works. A few moments later. Right, I've got it all back together now with the uh, motor cover on and control panel and everything all put back together. So let's switch it on and uh, give it a go. And we've got the please wait. Bit of a glare there off the uh, roof lights. There we go. All right, so I just uh, moved it slightly so uh, we can see the buttons and everything. So if I press low, I'll press enter first. If I press that one, that's made the incline go to one and a half. If I press the next one. Incline's gone to three, and the bottom one, the incline's gone to five. You can manually turn it up and down as well with these two buttons now. We've got the start and stop. We can set the speed. You can see the number change in there on the right hand side. We've got walk. And as you can see, it's just started to fire into life there. Uh, we've got jog, if I press that one. Oh yeah. And we've got run, so if I press that one. Oh, it's whizzing past. Right, I think we'll go back for a walk. I've just got my feet either side of it at the minute. I'm not running on it at the minute. You can see, my heart rate's already sort of like 95, just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can turn the speed up and down as well, those two buttons work, so we can turn it down there. Uh, so yeah, and we've got uh, stop, which uh, stops it, and I'm going to start it again as well, which I've just done. That's only going at a uh, slow pace at the moment there, but if I turn the speed up, and there we go, so yeah, so it's all uh, all working. So I think these uh, sell on eBay second hand for about uh, about eight hundred pounds. So yeah, not a bad uh, not a bad bit of kit for free, and it cost us about ten pound for the uh, the buttons and obviously just a bit of time. So right then, if you uh, enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.